evening students. Welcome back to biology classes. In the previous class, we have discussed the five kingdom classification, which was proposed by R. H. Whitaker. And you are all familiar with the five kingdoms. So, which are the five kingdoms? Kingdom, Monera, Protista, Mycota, Plantae, and Animalia. So, these are the five kingdoms proposed by R. H. Whitaker. Now, we are moving on to the main kingdoms. In the the first kingdom is kingdom Monera. So it is very very important and this kingdom Monera, it is the kingdom of prokaryotes because in the previous class only I told you the one and only kingdom which includes prokaryotes is the kingdom Monera. That's why the kingdom Monera is the kingdom of prokaryotes. The prokaryotes can be seen only in the kingdom Monera, hence it is the kingdom of So, salient features in the suns, whatever the examples which comes out of this kingdom Monera, all organisms will have certain common unique features and those features are called as salient features. So, these salient features are very very important. Yeah, salient features of kingdom Monera. So, they include the kingdom Monera which includes most primitive, simple, microscopic, unicellular, prokaryotic organisms. So, this is very very important. Whatever the examples which comes under the kingdom Monera, they are most primitive. You know, primitive is nothing but the first form of organisms. They are very simple. They are microscopic. They cannot be seen through naked eyes. And they are unicellular, which means made up of a single cell and they are prokaryotic organisms. Then what are prokaryotes? So prokaryotes are the organisms which do not contain a true nucleus and membrane blood cell organelles. So such prokaryotic organisms are seen in the kingdom Monet. So that is very very important. And these organisms can be seen everywhere. They are the most abundant organisms as they are present everywhere. You can see these organisms that comes under Monera like bacteria. So they can be seen in soil, water, air, even they are present in on our skin. So they are most abundant and they are present everywhere. And some organisms, they even live like in extreme habitats. So extreme habitats in the sense they are present in hot springs. So in the hot springs, the temperature is very high as high as 100 degrees Celsius. So in such hot springs also, the, the organisms can able to survive. They are even present in deserts, snow and deep inside the ocean. So the organisms can live in extreme habitats like the hot springs, deserts, snow and deep inside the ocean. And even some organisms may present in and on the surface of other organisms as a parasite. So parasites, they may be present inside the organism or on the surface of the organism. So these organisms may present in or on the surface of other organisms as a parasites. And these organisms are solitary. Solitary in the sense, they may be present in single, they may be colonial. Colonial means they are present in colonies. So many of the organisms are present in one colony. Like that, the organisms may be singly present or they may be colonial or they may be filamentous. Filamentous means they look like this. So this is like a filament. So they may be present as a single, solitary, colonial or Likewise, so they have they exist in different varieties or different habitat, colonial, solitary, and filamentous nature. And very importantly, as you said, as they are prokaryotes, they do not contain true nucleus and membrane bone cell organelles. We cannot find any mitochondria, chloroplast, or other membrane bone cell organelles, but only the non-membrane. 
studying in detail about what is this 70 years, 80 years, everything in the chapter 7. So, if you are really interested to know about this, try to find out. It is very interesting. Otherwise, I will explain in chapter 7. So, they can die 70 years type of ribosomes. Actually, uh, one ribosome is made up of two subunits, one smaller subunit and a larger subunit. And this is smaller subunit having a 30 years and larger subunit having 50 years. So, this is a complete ribosome is called as 70 years. You may be confused. Here I have done 50 years, here I have done 30 years. If you add these two, it becomes 80 years. So, you cannot think like that. It is 50 years only, it is 30 years only, but together it is 70 years. Try to find out how this becomes 70 years. So, 70 years type of ribosomes are the characteristic feature of prokaryotes. And here, the organisms, they contain cell wall and that cell wall is made up of one of the important chemical component called as peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan are also called as murine. The chemical component of the cell wall is again very really important in the organism that comes under kingdom morera. They usually contain cell wall and that cell wall is mainly made up of a chemical component called as peptidoglycan are also called as murine. And these organisms, they may be photosynthetic or chemosynthetic. If they are photosynthetic, they will utilize the sunlight. If they are chemosynthetic, they will obtain nutrition from the chemicals. Likewise, the organisms may be photosynthetic or chemosynthetic. And some organisms in this kingdom monera, they have the ability to fix the atmospheric nitrogen. You may be studying the nitrogen cycle in your uh, ninth standard, I think that is a biogeochemical cycle. So, where you have studied the nitrogen cycle. So, during nitrogen fixation, so I told you, here some organisms, uh, they help in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen. See, atmosphere comprises about 78% of the nitrogen and plants require nitrogen in a large quantity. But that atmospheric nitrogen plants cannot utilize it directly. That's why the nitrogen has to be converted. So that is called nitrogen fixation that you will study later in the upcoming chapters. So that nitrogen fixation, for the purpose of nitrogen fixation, few microorganisms will be helpful, especially the example rhizobium. Rhizobium it is one of the best examples. It mainly helps in nitrogen fixation, especially in leguminous plants that you will study later. And the organisms in this kingdom, they mainly reproduce by conjugation, binary fusion, and spore formation. So, what is this conjugation? Here, conjugation is the word, for example, if this is one bacteria and this is another bacteria. When bacteria, uh, two bacteria come, uh, come together, uh, come near to each other, here they will form a conjugation tube like this. And even this bacteria also produces one conjugation tube so that here the genetic material from this bacteria can able to transfer to this bacteria. So this is called as conjugation. This is one type of mode of reproduction in kingdom morera. And other type is binary fission. Where one bacteria will divide into two, that is called as a binary fusion, and each one becomes a new bacteria, a new organism, and spore formation. Sometimes uh, the spores will be produced in some some microorganisms, and those spores later develop into a new organism. So this is how the organisms will reproduce in the kingdom only. So all these serial features are very very important. I told you they are most primitive, microscopic, simple, unicellular, prokaryotic organisms. And they are the most abundant organisms and they are present everywhere. So they can live in extreme habitats like a hot springs, deserts, snow, deep inside the ocean. And they even live as a parasites even are on the surface of other organisms. They may be solitary, colonial, filamentous in nature and as they are prokaryotes, they do not contain true nucleus and membrane non cell organelles, but they contain only 70 years type of ribosomes. And very importantly, the cell wall is mainly made up of peptidoglycan or murine. They may be photosynthetic or chemosynthetic and some organisms can able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen, example rhizobium and the modes of reproduction either by conjugation.
formation, binary fusion or spore formation. So these are the salient features of the kingdom Monera. And this kingdom Monera mainly involves two subgroups. One is called as Archaebacteria. Archaebacteria and the other one is called as Eubacteria. So this you already studied in the domains of uh, life. So here the kingdom Monera, Monera it is mainly grouped into two subgroups. One is Archaebacteria, other one is Eubacteria. So Archaebacteria, already I have told you, these are the most ancient and most primitive organisms evolved on the earth. So they are the first formed ancient prokaryotes evolved on the earth. And they are considered as a special type of bacteria. They are special bacteria because they can survive in special habitats or harsh habitats like hot springs, deserts, snow and deep inside the ocean. Even they are present in extreme salt conditions or in saline conditions. If they are present in extreme salty areas, it is called a saline condition. Example we can give halo fish. Halo fish. And examples for organisms which are present in hot springs. They are thermoacidophils. Thermoacidophils. And some organisms are present in marsh habitat. So where it, the areas are usually wet, in such conditions also some archaebacteria are present. Examples, methanogens. So here, if they are present in the saline conditions, they are called as uh, uh, halophils. They are called as halophils. And these thermoacidophils, they can able to tolerate a high temperature up to 80 degrees Celsius. They can able to tolerate and they can also tolerate very low pH. Here acidity, you will study in your chemistry, the acidic condition, basic condition and neutral condition. If the pH value, that is a hydrogen ion concentration. If the pH value is 7, it is called as neutral. If it is less than 7, it is called acidic. If it is more than 7, it is called basic. So here acidophils, they usually have the pH value less than 7. That's why I'm telling they can able to tolerate very low pH about 2. Less than 7 I means so they can able to tolerate 2. So that is thermoacidophils. And these methanogens, the methanogens are usually present in the gut of in the gut of the ruminant animals. So ruminant animals like cow, buffalo, ruminants are nothing but the plant feeding organisms like cow, buffalo and they are responsible for the production of methane gas. Methane it is biogas or gobar gas which mainly contains methane because that methane is produced from the dung of those animals as they contain methanogenic bacteria. So these methanogens are usually present in the ruminant animals and that is responsible for the production of methane from the dung of that uh, those animals. And very important thing in this archaea bacteria, they do not contain, they do not contain peptidoglycol or murine in their cell wall. They have cell wall, but here peptidoglycol is completely absent. This is very very important. In this archaea bacteria, the cell walls do not contain peptidoglycol or murine. That is the major difference between archaea bacteria and bacteria. They do not contain peptidoglycol in their cell wall. So this is about archaea bacteria. Now we will see about the eubacteria. So eubacteria, these are unicellular, microscopic, prokaryotic organisms and these eubacteria are characterized by the presence of peptidoglycol. So they usually contain peptidoglycol in their cell wall. So that is the important thing in this eubacteria. The organism which comes under eubacteria, they usually contain peptidoglycol in their cell wall. If they are motile, they contain flagella as a locomotory organ. Motile in the sense, if they are moving, if with the help of flagella, they can able 
condition, hot springs, marsh habitats, etc. And you know the important uh, where the thermal spurs are present that you know, and where the metrogens are present that also you know. And archaea bacteria they do not contain peptidoglycan. Or that is very important. Then eu bacteria they are they are characterized by the presence of peptidoglycan in their silva in their motile. They contain flagella and it includes bacteria, cyanobacteria and mycoplasma. So cyanobacteria they are also called as blue green algae because they contain chlorophyll A which is similar to flash. So where the cyanobacteria is present usually present in fresh water and moist soil and they are unicellular, colonial, filamentous, photosynthetic, autotrophs and they usually the colonies are surrounded by a gelatinous sheath. Each filament is called as trichome. Each trichome is surrounded by its own mucilaginous sheath. Its own mucilaginous sheath. You can know the importance of mucilaginous sheath. See, if this cyanobacteria is usually present in water, I said it is present in fresh water. Even though it is present in water, it will not undergo decay because of the presence of mucilaginous sheath. That mucilaginous sheath will protect the filament. And they also contain the specialized cells called as heterocysts. They aids in nitrogen fixation and they reproduce by asexual modes of reproduction. So that completes the cyanobacteria. And next, we need to discuss bacteria and mycoplasma. So these two we will be discussing the next class. And now we will discuss few objectives related to the topic. Yeah, in the previous class, uh, uh, I have discussed a few objective questions and you will work uh, up to 15, 15 questions. Now I am discussing the next questions. So, question number 16. Most abundant microorganisms are Option A, bacteria. Option B, virus. Option C, amoeba. Option D, parameter. You know that bacteria are the most abundant organisms. Next question. Which of the following is incorrect about bacteria? Which of the following is incorrect about bacteria? Option A, it is grouped under five categories on the basis of shape. Option B, it can lie in a hot springs, deep ocean, snow and desert areas. Option C, it can live as a parasite. And D, it is composed of simple behavior and complex structure. Actually, these are the statements are now options are A and B only correct. Option B, A and D only. Option C, D and C only. Option D, C and D only. So here, option A and D only incorrect. So because, see option statement A, it is grouped under five categories on the basis of shape. It is wrong. Actually, four categories are that we will discuss later. And option D, it is compound, it is composed of simple behavior and complex structure. Actually, structure is very simple. Here we have the one complex structure. So A and B statements are wrong. Next question. Most extensive metabolic diversity is found in option A protozoans, option B amphibians, option C bacteria, option D fungi. Here most extensive metabolic activity. You know metabolism, it is the sum total of all body of the organism. So, such metabolic diversity. Metabolic diversity can be seen in bacteria. And next question. Most of the bacteria are option A, chemoautotrophs, option B, photoautotrophs, option C, heterotrophs and option D, holosome. See, option A, chemoautotrophs are nothing but they are, they can synthesize their own food but they are dependent on chemicals. By obtaining chemicals, they prepare their own food. If they are photoautotrophs, they utilize sunlight and protect their own food. And C, heterotrophs, they are usually dependent on other organisms. And D, orozoic. So, orozoic in sense, they obtain nourishment by feeding other plants and other animals. So, that is called as orozoic. We are orozoic as well as heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Here, most of the bacteria are heterotrophic. Only few, that is only cyanobacteria autotrophic, but majority of them are heterotrophic. So option C is correct. So these are the few questions that I have discussed now. And
and remaining questions uh, I will send in your group try to find out the answers uh, and uh, if, uh, if you are finding difficulty I will send the key answers later so that completes today's class uh, next uh, in the next class we will be starting with uh, bacteria